Hi friends, it's Memorial Day 2017 and I just, uh, of course, I, on days like today we think about a lot of sacrifice, or I hope we do, because what someone has done for us, we should never want to uh, gloss over that or make less than it is or cheapen it in any way. And I was thinking about all our veterans. Um, my family has a lot of veterans in it. A lot of our family have served over the years. Um, we come from a long line of veterans and pioneers. Our, you know, we're all immigrants, but um, my family came from Europe and um, they fought in every war that this country has had. They defended our ability to live free. I'm so grateful for them. I am so grateful for them. And I guess you could say in a way, it was an exchanged life. They did that for me so that I could live the kind of life that I live today. That's amazing to me that my grandfathers, great-grandfathers, my father, my great-great-great-grandfather, um, several of my grandfathers served in the Civil War. And they, somewhere in the back of their minds, I think they had me in mind in a kind of odd sort of way because I was the seed of their generations to come. And that is amazing to me. And so while I was thinking about that, hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. Hi, doll. <laughs> While I was thinking about that today, I got to thinking about the other exchange life. The, the main exchange life that was given for me. The one that lived a life for me, a perfect life for me, because I would be unable to live that perfect life. Even in every bit of my will applied, I still would not be able to do that. He knew that. Jesus knew that. So I want to talk to you, just share a couple thoughts about that today, because I, I see a lot of posts about sinners. Are we a sinner saved by grace? Are we a saint that sins? Yes and yes. Um, but there's so much more to living an exchanged life than just those two ideas. And it's not just one or the other. It's both. And they come together in a truth in the middle that I think we should acknowledge. You know, um, it is our applying ourselves to the truth and to living in obedience. The instruction that we've received now, the first step, of course, is knowing what that instruction is. Um, and then the second step is, how do we live that kind of life? How are we unable to do that? I mean, does God say, I'll give you strength, and then he leaves, and then he says, okay, you're on your own? That's not what the exchanged life is about. The exchanged life is that Jesus himself comes and lives within us in the spirit of the holy God. There is only one Holy Spirit, and that spirit is the Spirit of God, comes and dwells within us and helps us to understand and enables us to walk the walk, enables us to understand even the instruction that he's given for us to live. And sometimes I think people think, well, if I can just be a little stronger, if I can be a little better, if I can walk a little straighter, if I can talk a little nicer, if my attitude is a little bit better, and all those things are great, but when you're doing it in your own strength, you will run out of strength and you will run out of willpower because after a while, our patience runs thin. And I hear people say, God, give me patience. Like he's going to give you something that will make you more self-sufficient. He's not going to do that. He says you can do nothing without him. So he's not going to give you his attributes so that you can boast and claim them. He says, in me, 
with me, by me, through me. You can do all things, all things. And without me, you can do nothing, nothing of eternal value, nothing at all. Now back to this idea of if we're just a little stronger and a little better and a little more uh, persevering, we can live the Christian life. Well, the Christian life is no more than Christ's life in us. We can't do Christian. We can only be Christian. And I, I'd like to use a little object lesson. This is going to be a really short thing today, but, um, you know, I've got this glove here in front of me. Can you all see this glove? This is a glove. It's a glove, just a regular glove. Now, as you can see, this glove has no intrinsic life of its own. It just kind of, if I put it down on the table, it just kind of lays there. Now, I can pray for this glove to get up and do something. And I can say, well, glove, you have five fingers. You have a palm. You have a wrist. Why aren't you doing anything? Why aren't you effective? Why don't you do what I tell you to? But see, this glove is useless. As it is, it's useless. But once the hand or the life of God is put on, now this glove can do everything the hand can do. This is the life of Jesus in us. I can go to seminary. I can have prayer meetings. I can fast and pray, and I can tell this glove all day long what to do. But if the life is not in the glove, the glove is useless to me. That's how our exchange life is with God. If we are not inhabited by the life of God, then what we do is useless in an eternal sort of way. So I just wanted to share that with you today because an exchanged life, it's important for us to keep that ever before us because what the hand can do, the hand enables the glove to do. We're the glove. Jesus is the hand. The Spirit of God in us is the hand. Let's never forget God doesn't say, I'll give you patience. He says, I am patient and I live in you. And if you will allow me to enable you, you will be patient too. Because my attributes, my characteristics will become apparent in you as you allow me to conform you to the life inside you. This is the exchange life. I'm so grateful for it. And on today, the day of remembrance for those who also gave their life for me. I think it's important to remember that an exchanged life enables us, gives us something that we do not have on our own. God isn't going to make us self-sufficient. God wants us God-sufficient. That takes the life within for the glove or the vessel to function properly. Okay, enjoy your day. It's gorgeous here in Nashville. I hope it's gorgeous where you are too. Hi, Rolene. Hi, Randy. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Bill Dykes. Oh, my friends. Have a marvelous, marvelous day. And enjoy the freedom that both our veterans paid for and our Lord has paid for. Allow the spirit within to conform you. Be the vessel, be the glove, and let God be the hand. Ooh, it's good stuff. Simple, really. The principle is very simple. But it takes surrender. Oh, and while I'm on surrender, let me just also add this. Surrender isn't something I don't believe that we give up.
don't give up things when we surrender. We have to receive the ability to surrender because it's foreign to our nature. Our nature is very self-sufficient. So conforming, being conformed to Christ means we have to receive from God the ability to be conformed. We have to receive. And people frame submission and surrender all the time with giving up something. But I submit to you, in God's economy, it's receiving what you need to do and be what he has asked. Again, be the glove and let God be the hand that both guides you and indwells you. Okay, enjoy this fabulous day. Let's see who else is on here. Hi, Travis. Hi, Donna. Hi, Matthew. I hope you guys are enjoying this fabulous day. It's a wonderful day. How much God has given us everything we have. So be blessed, prosper in the Lord as your spirit prospers. Be the glove. Bye.